In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a list of items with an interactive checkbox, just like this. So let's dive in. All right, here I already prepared this mobile screen. And here, as you can see, I have four different flags and one checkbox. All right, so we are going to need these elements to create this interactive list. First things first, I'm going to turn these flags into components. And the way we name them in the layers list matters. Why? Because Figma categorizes them based on the way we name them. So here, as you can see, I have flag forward slash en, flag forward slash it, etc., etc. Okay, so we need to name them consistently. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to head over to the toolbar. And from this drop down menu, I'm going to click on create multiple components. Just like this, we turn them into components. All right, that's the first step. Next, we need to start creating our item. Okay, for that, we need a text layer. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard, left click to create a text layer. And I'm going to type English. Okay, I'm going to change the font here to plus Jakarta Sans. It should be English. And I'm going to increase the font size to 15 and the weight is going to be medium, just like this. Now let me change the color here to a dark gray, just like this. All right, what else do we need? Right next to this text, we need to place our flag. So I'm going to head over to the assets tab. Alternatively, you can head over to the resources section and from here you can look for your components. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to the assets tab. And from here, as you can see, we have the flag category. I'm going to drag and drop an instance of this English flag component, just like this. And now I'm going to select these two and I'm going to add auto layout to them. Okay. So I'm going to hit shift and a on my keyboard to put them inside a frame. And this frame is responsive because we are using auto layout. Next, I'm going to set the spacing between these two items here to eight, just like that. And also, I'm going to change the alignment here. Although the alignment is set to left center, I'm going to make some adjustment. I'm going to head over to the advanced layout setting. And here, as you can see, we have a text baseline alignment. I'm going to enable it to align our flag with the baseline of our text, just like this. It looks much better now. All right, right in front of this frame, we need to have this checkbox. So we could go ahead and turn it into a component as well, but I'm not going to do that for this tutorial. I'm just going to bring it right here. Now I'm going to select this checkbox and this frame, and I'm going to add auto layout to them. So hit shift and A, just like this. Make sure that the alignment is set to center. And the spacing between items doesn't matter here because we are going to make sure that this frame is responsive. So what I'm going to do is head over to the advanced layout settings and I'm going to change the spacing mode from packed to space between to make this frame responsive. So now if I try to adjust the width of this frame, as you can see, this checkbox stays on the right side and this frame stays on the left side. That's exactly what we need. So that later you could adjust the size of your items in your list in case you need to. All right, now I'm going to select this frame too and I'm going to add auto layout to them again. So hit shift and A to put it inside another frame and this outer frame, frame three, is going to be named item and also I'm going to add a stroke to it. So while it's selected, I'm going to head over to the stroke section, hit this plus icon, just like this. The thickness is going to be one. That's fine. I'm going to make it rounded. So here, let me increase the corner radius to 12, just like that. However, I'm not satisfied with the padding inside this item. So I'm going to select this item. I'm going to set the vertical and horizontal padding to 16 just like this. And maybe we can increase the corner radius to 16 as well. It looks much better now. Next, I'm going to change the color of this stroke to the exact same purple color as we have here. So I can just copy this color code and paste it right there. All right, now that our item is ready, we need to turn it into a component and also add a variant into our component set. So I'm going to select this item and then I'm going to create a component just like this. And let's hit this add variant button to add a variant into our component set. Okay, so here we have two different variants. The first one is called default. I'm going to select it. And here I'm going to change the property from default to unchecked. And for this one, I'm going to change it to checked. 
If you want to change the name of this uh, property, you can select your component set and here you can change the property name to state, just like that. Okay, so for this first variant, for this unchecked variant, what we need to do is select this checkbox here and I'm gonna select this vector inside this tick icon and I'm gonna hide it because obviously we shouldn't be able to see that for our unchecked variant, right? And for the checked variant, I'm gonna select this checkbox and inside we have this vector. I'm gonna add a field to it with the same color. So let me add a field to it and I'm gonna paste this color code right here. And I'm gonna change the color of this thick icon to white. So there we go. And the last thing we need to do is connect these two variants. So I'm gonna select this unchecked variant. I'm gonna head over to the prototype tab and just create a connection just like that. The trigger is gonna be on click. The animation is gonna be instant. We don't need to set it to smart animate. Next, I'm gonna select this checked variant and connect it back to our unchecked variant, just like that. Everything looks fine and our item is ready. Now it's time to go ahead and create a list of items. So if I head over to the assets tab here, under the local components, I can find this item that we just created and I'm gonna drag and drop it inside my frame right there, okay? Let's see if it's responsive or not. As you can see, it's not. So let's quickly fix that. The reason it's not responsive is because we need to go ahead and select this frame inside, okay? This frame two in my case. And we need to change its resizing option from fixed to fill container and for this one as well. I'm gonna select it, change the resizing option to fill container. And now if I select this instance, look what happens, it's fully responsive, all right? So make sure to do that. Uh, the width doesn't really matter. I'm gonna set it to 230 for now. You can adjust it as you wish. And now I'm gonna duplicate it, hit Control D or Command D, bring it down. And I'm gonna duplicate it two more times because we have four different languages in total. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change these text layers and I'm gonna fast forward this process. All right, but what about our flags? Let's change them as well. Since we created components at the beginning of this tutorial, we can simply select our flag just like this. And here using this drop down menu, we can change it to whatever language we want. I'm gonna change it to Italian just like that. And for this, I'm gonna change it to German. And this one is gonna be Polish. Next, I'm gonna select all these items and I'm gonna add auto layout to them. So hit Shift and A. And here I'm gonna set the space between to eight and we are basically done. Let's go ahead and give it a try and see if everything works as expected. I'm gonna select this iPhone 14 frame and just play it. All right, let's click on this first card. Okay, it works just fine. If you wanna learn how to make your UI design responsive, make sure to watch this video on the screen. And as usual, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to not miss the upcoming tutorials. Have a beautiful day and see you next time.